Welcome back. Let's have a look how we finished the day on Wall Street. The Dow was up by 184 points. The high of the day was uh, 249 points, so off the highs, but still a healthy 0.7% return. The S&P just behind that. The Nasdaq led the major indices. It was up three quarters of 1%. The best performing sectors, consumer discretionary, energy and tech within the S&P. Uh, now, President uh, Trump, uh, of course, announced uh, more tariffs uh, earlier today, late yesterday. And he's speaking this afternoon about the topic and the escalating trade war, saying the U.S. is willing to impose even more tariffs on China in the future. We may make a deal at some point, but right now uh, we just imposed $200 billion at 25 percent. Uh, we uh, it just went on. It actually kicks in on January 1st to 25 percent. It starts off at 10 percent, but shortly thereafter goes to 25. And if there's a retaliation against our farmers and our industrial workers, our ranchers, if any of that goes on, we're going to kick in another $257 billion. Uh, and that'll be also at 25 percent, which we don't want to do, but we probably will have no choice. Laying out there the threat of more tariffs. Here to talk about the impact on new China tariffs, both on the ground for farmers and manufacturers, as well as in Washington. Libby Cantrell, head of public policy at PIMCO. Mike Nag, Iowa Secretary for Agriculture. So, Secretary Nag, you heard the president saying if China retaliates against our ranchers and farmers, there will be more tariffs. Do you support and do your members of, of your farming community support the president's actions or? Is it hurting the wallets? Well, it's as we head into the 2018 harvest season for corn and soybean out here in Iowa, this escalation of the trade conflict really couldn't come at a worse time. So it is impacting our markets, and that's impacting our farmers. So uh, our farmers understand that there are issues that need to be resolved, particularly with China. Uh, but there is no doubt uh, that the retaliatory tariffs are impacting our marketplace, and that's impacting our producers negatively. Maybe I shouldn't have framed it as an or. Are they still going to vote Republicans <laughs> in the mid Republican in the midterm and support President Trump? Well, I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into that. I think uh, issues that ultimately impact uh, the economics of Iowa and impact farmers' pocketbooks will impact the politics. But it's not as simple as just this one issue. Uh, farmers are encouraged by the tax reform. They're encouraged by progress on uh, regulatory relief. And so there's, there's more to it than just the trade picture. But it is an important issue that uh, absolutely will impact their pocketbooks. Uh, Libby, when we consider the reaction by markets today to the latest sort of escalation, clearly it was a positive response by markets. What do you put that down to? Was this escalation less than, than pe what people were expecting? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I think people were likely expecting the 25% rate, and so the fact that they got the 10% rate. We were talking about earlier, though, I mean, I was personally a little bit befuddled by the reaction because, you know, not only are these, are, is, the, is the president going to go through with the, the tariffs, but he alluded to future tariffs. Um, tariffs on all Chinese goods. Uh, and so that would be, you know, invariably would hit the consumer, uh, invariably would hit growth, um, and would likely be, you know, negative for markets. And I guess one of the things that I think investors have struggled with is there doesn't seem to be a process that they're kind of looking at and trying to benchmark against expectations and what's the next right. point of negotiation. Um, is that going to develop here? We're talking about some meetings later this month. Yeah, I think that, I mean, look, there were some um, meetings that were tentatively scheduled for the end of the month. Uh, it's unclear whether the Chinese are willing to go through with those at this point. Um, there is a potential off-ramp and the G20 summit, the leader summit at the end of November. And I think that um, if the optimists are going to look at that to say that that could be a potential off-ramp, I think we're a little bit more skeptical of that. Um, and the reason is, is that because what the administration is asking from the Chinese are significant concessions uh, to their, basically, their China 2025 industrial growth model. And if it were just a question of buying more LNG or buying more soybeans, I think the China would, Chinese would be ready to deal. But we are asking them to make pretty big concessions, and I just don't think they're there, at least at this point. Secretary Nig, how big of a market is China for your community? Well, for, for China, the, the, the top issue that we talk about is soybean production here. And so uh, roughly one third of our soybeans go to, uh, to China. So it's a, it's a significant impact on that, that soybean market. Well, and Mike, uh, are you encouraged, though, uh, sorry, Secretary Neg, are you encouraged, though, to see some of the progress that has been made with the likes of Mexico if something similar happened with Canada? Do you think uh, you and your constituents would be 
encourage and would that offset the kind of negative uh, rhetoric and escalating trade tariffs with China? Absolutely, and there's, there's definitely uh, uh, folks appreciate the fact that we seem to be making some progress here with NAFTA. Uh, we really do need in Iowa, Canada and Mexico are our number one and number two uh, trading partners, and so uh, securing uh, uh, NAFTA 2.0 would be a significant uh, uh, step in the right direction for Iowa. And then if we can carry that momentum into China, but also beyond that, and, and re-engaging with some countries and expanding markets in the, that were involved in the TPP agreement, uh, Japan, Vietnam, South Korea, those would all be positive things too. So uh, our farmers are looking for the administration to really play offense on trade as well. Is there any way, Libby, at this point to put a GDP estimate on how much this is going to hurt U.S. or China? Well, look, I think for the U.S. and our, and we've been working on this internally, I think for the U.S., um, for 2019, that's when you'd really see the impact, especially if you saw the tariffs on all of Chinese uh, imports. I mean, you're talking about potentially 50 basis points, 60 basis points of a headwind to growth in, in 2019. So not, you know, not insignificant when you're talking about sort of two and a half, three percent real GDP growth. Half a percent to a full percent. Potentially, yeah. Thank you. Libby Cantrell, Mike Nag for joining us there from Iowa. Move over, Neil Armstrong.